Hey guys, I'm working today in this head-up display unit. This is the model 2350, it's one of the early models. Um, this unit was certified in the 737-300, so believe it or not, that particular aircraft or that, that airframe came with the option of having this system, this head-up uh, display unit system. Not many airliners cho uh, chose for, for this um, for this option, so there are not really many aircrafts still there that st still flying with this uh, with this equipment. Um, but it's quite interesting that back in the days already they had this really good technology available uh, in such a small aircraft, I would say, um, like the 737 Classic. Uh, so this is one of the early models. Uh, this was the model that was certified. I mean, not this particular serial number, but. Uh, the, uh, the this this was the very first model um, that was introduced, and then uh, later on they came with uh, eight HGS um, four thousand, which is a much newer unit, and those are the ones that are installed today in the in the seven three seven and Gs. So what happens is this unit was also uh, I believe was also the deploy on some 600s uh, but then was directly switched uh, to the to the new system on, on practically all the NGs the modern ones um, so the, the unit has also so, so the system has different different components I will go through them at the moment to explain a little bit what they do um, one thing I can say now is that the new model uh, has these two boxes combined together and this the um, overhead unit which in this particular model is a CRT in the in the new model is using an LCD which makes it a bit more convenient and all voltages kind of go down uh, so a bit more um, let's say friendly on that perspective for this model that this is a CRT uh, we have so main computer the drive electronics unit which is basically um, in charge of driving the CRT um, then we have the panel the control panel uh, which is basically a user interface to the computer so uh, launch tests and uh, set some parameters then we have the the action um, CRT which is uh, not more than a CRT inside with a huge lens. Um, this unit is big and heavy, as you can imagine. Uh, and then we have finally the, the, this beautiful piece, which is the combiner. So a combiner has a few stuff here, just to uh, fold it, uh, brightness, uh, and that, that's practically all, ah, and, the, and, the, and the light sensor back here. Um, so that's practically all, very simple. So this is what you would see in a classic. In the NG, they changed this design. They made it a bit more modern. It looks quite nice. Um, this one looks like a, like a tank, I would say. It's quite heavy as well, uh, but everything is like you would expect really, um, really steady, really, really racked, uh, I would say. I don't know if there's the right English word for that. Anyways. Um, so how this works is there are many interconnections between the different units. So the computer connects with the panel through a ring, 4, uh, 429, so it has two lines only. Then the computer connects to the DEU, it sends video signals to the DEU. The DEU sends video signals with the right voltages and so on to the CRT. The CRT connects to the combiner there through this uh, uh, this cable here, and basically what it does, it will just uh, bring some um, power to the combiner for the sensors, get the signals back, do some. There is some electronics here, and it will eventually bring some of this here back. Um, I'm actually not sure about that. I need to check. Um, so what happens is. Then there is some connection from this unit directly to the computer. So, how this works? Well, we have everything that is analog 
uh, I would say not analog because this is not really an analog output, an analog video output. Everything is digital. The difference is that this unit here will actually drive everything on the on the correct voltages. So this will generate a different uh, sort of voltages to, to specifically to talk with the CRT. So we have 90 volts, 32 plus minus 15 volts here. Um, so it will translate these video signals to something that can talk with the CRT, basically. Um, then we have a digital connection, uh, communication between this and that, and this and the CRT. And this, I believe, I mean, I haven't uh, sniffed that data yet, but I believe that is used for testing purposes and uh, monitoring. Uh, so the computer practically is aware of absolutely everything that is going on. There is one single piece that is missing at the moment, is in the first officer side, there is a, a small display panel uh, that tells uh, more or less in which status the, the computer is, besides that panel, this goes in the MIP, and I have it somewhere but I cannot find it, um, it's a, a six, uh, a six core um, uh, panel, very simple. It's just an annunciator um, panel, basically. Good, so what I'm missing on this explanation, so we have a lot of wires, um, most of them differential, as it should be, for this type of systems. Um, it's a bit messy, I, I know that. Um, what happens here is I used, um, so I don't have the full space now to put it all together and do a nice wiring. So what I decided to do is to do, let me show you, is to do something like this. So I took Ethernet cables, which I absolutely love. They are cheap and really good quality. This in particular is not CAT6, so it's not dual ice, it's not dual, um, this doesn't have dual shielding on it, but for these short cables, it works just fine and it it's, it's will be no problem at all. Um, so we have just, as you see, from here to there, so it's absolutely fine. What is important is that they are differential. Um, and as I can see here, I, I, I try to put a lot of effort to make it as nice as I can. Um, although it's not, uh, it's, it's not probably how it should be, of course, uh, with adding wire, but uh, the adding wire is very expensive, so... I decided to do this way for now. Um, so we have all this is signal, so this is video and communication to the DEO. The DEO we have the same, so I have pin to pin. And then the complicated part went to the CRT because this guy here has really special connectors, um, which I cannot find anywhere. Uh, they are really tiny, tiny footprint. It's not like the normal Canon plugs you will find in uh, other panels and so on. Um, I'm, I mean, I get it. They don't have a space, so they have to put this tiny connector. But it's, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to find the the mating parts at the moment. I don't know, problem. I need to put more effort, but. Good, so I tried to do, again, a uh, good job here to put the pins. I found the mating, a mating pin that could work, um, or actually works, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a female, this is a male, so this is pins, this is socket. Um, so I did, uh, yeah, I think in total there are like 170 ends, uh, all, all the wirings in, in total. Um, so I basically took a lot of time to solder all this stuff and put it together. Um, so we have connection from here and this one goes to the combiner as I said before. Um, basically this unit is sending plus minus 15 volts for some of the sensors and getting some signals back from the sensors. Good, so probably what we can do is to power it up and see what it does. Um, you will see at the beginning, so ah, something I didn't mention is interesting fact is this is 28 volts, this is 115. Not the most fantastic uh, combination ever because you need to have the two things to make it run. Uh, but yeah, it's, it is how it is. Um, the other thing is uh, that I didn't mention before, this unit here, 
um, basically does navigation on some part of navigation by its own. So that's the part that I'm really interested in and that is why I um, really wanted to put it to work and feed all the ink lines. I really would love to see this thing working like as it should. Um, um, so basically this unit is gathering data from the entire airframe. So everything comes here, uh, or practically most of it. So we have ADCs, IRSs, BORs, ILSs, uh, everything has to do with navigation, uh, uh, situation awareness of the aircraft, everything. And um, um, then we have the primary and the secondary. So you can imagine how many are inclines we have here, which is the super cool part. So I'm really looking forward to, to plug all those stuff in and start seeing this thing coming alive. Okay, good. So let's, um, let's uh, give uh, 20 volt power with this um, funny power supply I have here. So yeah, by the way, this unit is quite power hungry. It's using 100 watts. And as I can see here, we get an error now because 115 volts is not there. The unit is off, has this little white bubble there. Um, and if we go to the panel, let's see. Let's uh, run the test. We should see something similar here. So this is the advantage of having such a panel is a bit more user friendly to, to see what is going on. So it is telling that indeed the overhead unit uh, is a failing and the deal. So it is true. Let's keep uh, 115 volts and see what happens here. It will get a bit noisier now. Good. So as you can see here, the light is extinguished, so it become black. Um, we still have a 86. So let's rerun this to see what it does. Cool, so perfect. So that means nothing is going on there. Uh, every, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, everything is okay, uh, is what I mean. Um, and now we should see, let's take a look if this thing is giving some output. And you can see here, already it's giving some, something out, which is quite cool. Um, let's see if we can see it in the combiner. Uh, th this is where it gets a bit complicated, because um, finding the right viewpoint is definitely not that easy. I mean, I need to, I need to have a proper setup with uh, the proper mounting and, and so on. Now I cannot find the title, probably there, and the autofocus is not liking it. But as you can see that there is this HGS test that's menu. So basically, uh, now we are in test mode, uh, and we have a lot of options actually to see. There's a little arrow there. Um, one can move around with the, with the panel, with these two keys here. And now the autofocus is not working. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, one can just go around with these buttons here and change the uh, in in the in this in the combiner can see all the details. Uh, this is super cool because it has the pages are really complete. Uh, they have a lot of information about uh, what sensors are missing and so on. So I'm really looking forward to play with that. And if I put it out of test, basically uh, it will just show some sort of PFT information. So uh, let's try to see if we find so Well, there is the typical TICAS fail, um, if I try to catch it. So every little box here is actually saying, hey, one sensor is missing, so or sensors are in up. This is basically what it means. But you can see here a little bit of the, yeah. That's it, uh, good progress here. I'm happy that the wiring did work out well until now. Um, the main 
thing would be to find the right position for the display so it can actually be useful to see what is coming out of the display and yeah this is what I will try to figure out how to do probably next good um, this is what I wanted to show you I hope uh, is somehow, some, somehow interesting and until the next time <laughs>